So in this video, I'm going to fix one of the biggest problems and heavily asked questions in the dropshipping space, which is I'm getting traffic on my dropshipping store, but no sales or very little sales or very little conversion rate. In this video, I'm going to fix that problem. Before getting to what the potential issues may be, we need to establish what the baselines are. You need to know whether you actually have a problem with your Shopify store or not. Maybe you don't. Maybe you just need to send more people there. So let's talk some initial baseline numbers first. So let's jump into my computer. This is not where I want to start. We'll come back to that. The first thing I want to show you is this. The average e-commerce conversion rates, which are around 25 to 3% according to industry leaders. This is obviously gonna vary. I can tell you from experience that you will struggle to be profitable if you're not converting at a minimum of 2%. Ideally, you wanna be pushing sort of towards four or maybe even 5% when it comes to direct response marketing as well. I.e. if you are spending $100 on Facebook ads to make an immediate return, you need to be converting at at least 2%, if not double that. Certainly as we come into the Q4 periods, I usually find that my own stores, the more established ones at least, can convert between six, seven, and sometimes even 8%, depending on what the product is, of course. If you're selling a cheap $20 product, that's gonna convert or should convert a lot higher versus selling, say like an 80 or $100 product. The next thing I wanna show you then is if we come back into my ad account, I can of course refresh these numbers just to show they are legit. This is only one campaign that we're taking a look at that has 1200 purchases, so it's pretty established. You can see that it's performing well with an average cost per purchase of $30. If we do some maths on this, just to give you a rough idea of the kind of conversion rate that you're looking for, if we take the 1252 purchases, divide this by the reach of 2.1 million, 15797, this equals that number, times that by 100, Facebook ads conversion rate is approximately 0.06%. I give you these numbers so you can plug them into your existing results and make a comparison. The next thing I want to show you is this. So these, this, these, this. these are the biggest reasons why people abandon their online shopping carts. Whoops, let's come back down into the information I wanted to show you. Basically, these are the reasons why somebody would come onto your site and then not actually make a purchase. So I'm going to take you through each of these, how it applies to a typical dropship and store, point out some of the obvious things, and hopefully there'll be some things on here that you've missed that you can instantly change overnight to instantly transform the success of your own stores. Number one, extra costs to high shipping, tax and fees. Here in the UK, it doesn't really apply to us taxes and things like that. I know shopping online in the US, taxes are different state to state. People would expect to pay those naturally. Here in the UK, it's not applicable because no, there should be no mention of taxes at all on your dropshipping store. It's included in the price. Think about it, go into Amazon, you don't know what the tax is, it's built in. The price you see on the product page is the price you pay in the checkout process. That should be the same regardless where you are selling. Next is shipping. Always, always, always have a free shipping option on your Shopify store. You can offer a premium expedited shipping option for a couple of pounds, couple of dollars to help bump up those profit margins for the people who want the item sooner, for the people who want to pay for that premium shipping option. However, after being in e-commerce for many years now, as well as somebody who's bought things online for many years now, it still grinds me pain for shipping. So eliminate 47% of people will not buy something if they have to pay for shipping. So just give everybody a free shipping option. It's much better to sell a product for say $40, including shipping, than sell it for 35 plus $5 shipping, in my opinion. And I think this is the general consensus too when you look at studies across the board. Next, the side wanted me to create an account. This isn't an issue, as long as you haven't been playing around and ticking check boxes in your Shopify settings. By default, it won't have somebody do that. Delivery was too slow. I want to bundle this in with delivery options are not present on site or customer does not know when to expect the product. Do not hide from crappy delivery times. Think about it yourself. When's the last time you bought anything online without a clue of when it's gonna arrive? People wanna know when they're gonna get it. So if your shipping times are too slow and you're too embarrassed to put them on your Shopify store, alarm bells should be ringing in your head. You need to find a better supplier or alternatively a different product 
that can be delivered in a time in which you're happy to put onto your website. This should be no more than a week. We live in a day and age now where people want things yesterday. The max somebody's gonna wait is a week before they start complaining. Since COVID as well, delivery times across the board, everywhere around the world have been expedited. The only place in which you should have or will have to wait longer than a week is if you are ordering from AliExpress or a less than adequate supplier, a decent quality supply can and will deliver from China pretty much anywhere in the world, certainly the top five countries in max one week, or at least 80, 85% of, of all orders will come that quickly. 19%, so one in five people will not buy from your store because they do not trust you. This comes down to ultimately social proof. Have you got people on your site? I will, of course, show you your Shopify website in a second that does a brilliant, brilliant job of avoiding all of these things. I'll show you some great examples. In fact, instead of taking you through the list, why don't I show you some samples now? So this is product page that I wanted to show you in a second, but it's better to marry it up against the points that I'm making. So when it comes down to trust, here's some things that you can do to instill trust into your website so people feel comfortable enough to hand over their credit card information. Well, the first thing you can do is offer PayPal so people haven't got to do that. PayPal is a household brand name. Everybody in this planet feels safe shopping with PayPal because they know they can make a claim and get their money back if they're not happy with the product. So offer PayPal. New stores are mine. They will convert 50% plus of all orders will come through PayPal here in the UK. Make sure you have PayPal on there. Next thing you want is a guarantee, 100%, regardless of what the product is, eliminate any potential risk. Remove the risk from your consumer's point of view. Offer them a money back guarantee. If the product doesn't work, get the money back. If they're not happy with it, if they get the money back. If the product breaks, they get the money back. Make it specific and applicable to your product as well. So these guys are offering a shoe or a slider, I should say, that helps with pain in your feet. Have a pain-free guarantee. They haven't used those terms, but I would make it specific to the product, not just some generic one. Everybody just offers a 30-day guarantee. Make it a risk-free, pain-free guarantee. Wear our slippers, wear our sliders for 90 days. Give it an extended one. Don't go for the bore in 30 days that everybody does. If you wear our sliders for 90 days and you are not pain-free by the end of it, will give you money back. It's a no-brainer for consumers' point of view. Try and get your products featured, or if you like to live life on the edge, then fake it. These guys, have they been featured in all these different publications? Probably not. Are they using it to piggyback off the reputation of them so they look more trustworthy? Probably so. Needless to say, most people aren't gonna go searching around the site. Most people aren't gonna go searching around the net to see if this product was actually featured on these websites. They're gonna take their word for it. It helps piggyback off the reputation of these guys. Next, we have this section here. How brilliant is this? Playing in the background, this instantly captures people's attention. It's real people on camera talking, name dropping the actual product. Things like this do a brilliant, brilliant job of social proof. When you have people on your website when it's a faceless website, when there's not a single face to be seen on your website, it instantly becomes or raises red flags in your consumer's point of view. Have people, people, people on your website. People come across as a lot more friendly, a lot more relatable, and people can connect with people. They can't connect with a faceless website. By having people moving videos, it instantly instills trust into the site. They don't like it to be honest because at the end of the day they're doing nothing wrong they have reviews here they've used the same star reviews as trust pilot trust pilot again it's a household name it's a household name that everybody trusts for legitimate reviews they've taken what could be the aliexpress reviews but they've edited the way they've been displayed on the site or they're using an app that displays them to look like trust pilot reviews so subconsciously they're a lot more trustworthy 18% too long, complicated checkout process. Shouldn't be an issue on Shopify, to be honest. You can split test. There are apps out there that when somebody hits the add to cart button, it'll take them straight into the checkout process rather than the cart page. It's one less page that needs to load. It saves a couple of seconds. Test it in your own site and see if it works for you. I can see or calculate total order cost up front. Shouldn't be an issue once it wasn't satisfactory. So there we go. Almost two in every 10 people that come onto your site are gonna be looking for a returns policy. If you don't have one on your website, alarm bells are gonna leave, not gonna make a purchase.
website had errors slash crashed. Again, shouldn't be an issue if you're using one of the Shopify templates. There weren't enough payment methods. No excuse for having this one on your site. You can have Amazon Pay, Google Pay, Apple Pay, PayPal, Klarna, Afterpay, Clearpay. It's free to have them on there. So why not have them on there? And then 6%, the credit card was declined. Again, it shouldn't be an issue and kind of out of control that one. Coming back to the site then, some extra things that I'd like to point out um, just from my own experience that I know work really, really well. Number one is this first image I see is branded towards the site. They've added these icons, these custom icons that are blue, same fonts, they match the website. They don't look out of place. Even if they are stock imagery, recycled, taken from AliExpress, they've at least adapted them to make them look more original and more unique. That first image is going to be an image that every single person that lands on your page will see. Not everybody is gonna scroll through and see the second, third, fourth, or fifth images, but everybody will see that first one. It's great real estate. It takes up half the page, half of your page. Everybody's gonna see. Use it as an opportunity to put the best points across to a customer that they will see. 30 day guarantee, or a two get free gift. Number one, docu doctor recommended they've taken they've taken the most important points from that list i've just read out and completely eliminated them addressed them and eliminated them in the consumer's point of view next thing i really like just a small minor thing is this warning on a phone it actually does load the emoji so when you see it it does kind of like raise that curiosity in your head what are they warning me about it just instantly puts your attention there small thing i know but they quite like it instantly relieves pain and will cause comfort overload so they're warning something so they're warning people about a major benefit in their product again it just ensures that consumer reads and consumes that piece of information which obviously is a positive thing about the product this i really like too the slider i think the images they're using are pretty naff but it's just a nice little design feature and touch that you won't see on most stores. It helps you come across as really, really professional. So is this too, when you see these kind of like progress bar type looking things with numbers in, it kind of raises your curiosity because you want to know what they mean. So again, it gets people to read the information. They could put all of these things in one massive paragraph, but it's not as exciting. People aren't gonna read through paragraphs, but they will see these images and icons that raise their curiosity and want to read it because it's less boring thanks for watching the video guys i really hope you've enjoyed this one more importantly i hope you found some valuable insight there that helps improve the success of your business if you would like an extra helping hand somebody to work one-to-one -one with over a set period of time whether that's one two three five six months then i want to invite you to a free google meeting with myself it's 30 minutes a chance for me and you to have a casual friendly chat get to know each other see the position you're in now and what kind of expertise and experience and knowledge you have and what you would like to achieve with my one-to-one -one help if you have a realistic goal a goal and a vision that i would like to help you with and believe i can help you achieve then i'll invite you to join my mentorship program and we can have a chat in a bit more detail on how that works if that sounds good to you check out the links in the video description below Book time and date that suits you, and I will see you on that meeting. Cheers.